Morning everyone. Welcome to Road Road Restore. I'm John. Okay then, so in this video we're going to be working on the CBR1000F engine. We're going to be degreasing all the parts with this. I've got my finger over the name. Just degrease a spray. I think you just spray it on, leave it for 16 years and then spray it off with your hose pipe. So here's what we've got to clean up. And uh, also we will be examining all the parts all the chains, all the bearings, all the gears and uh, out of the two engines we'll be rebuilding one engine with all the good parts we can find. So without further ado, let's get on with it. Okay so the first thing I'm going to try and remove is the gears. fairly tight but just roll them out and they should come out. The thing to note on when you're rebuilding is that there is like a little hole there and that lines up with a little pin inside the engine case. Uh, be careful with this end because this end will just start falling apart like that. And all your gears will fall off. So just try to get a bit familiar with how they go back just in case they all decide to come off. Try to store them so they don't fall apart. <coughs> uh, same with this one, with the clutch on. This one's going to be a bit heavier, obviously. Just try to lift it out. Be careful again because the end will fall off. And it does have like a... Where is it? <coughs> Just there, there's a little hole in the bearing. What locates? on a little pin inside the engine hopefully you can see that there's a pin there and a pin there so make sure you don't lose those and make sure when you put the engine back together all the bearings line up otherwise the crankcase halves won't go back together properly okay so that's all the gears out and the clutch this is the same be careful because everything will fall off if you tilt the shaft and then you've got to work out how everything goes back together so let's put those to one side and then we can work on how to get this crank out there we go just store those out the way for a moment so this would normally just lift out but I don't think it's going to lift out this oil chain is free the cam chain is free but the alternator chain is still under tension now we're going to have to find those cogs as well so let me turn the engine over yes we've still got these uh, alternator cogs Starter clutch and all that lot. Although I think the starter clutch is on the alternator. I don't know if that just lifts out or 
or what? What I'm going to try and do now is uh, just turn that back over. Just there is the uh, alternator chain tensioner. I'm just going to turn under these three bolts and remove that and uh, see what happens. See what it loosens up, if anything. Okay then, so let's just crack these three bolts open. That's one. Number two. Number three. There's one bolt struck down there. There's the other two bolts. Just carefully remove this in case it's gonna to fall to bits. Yes, it looks like it's uh, all of the bits. I don't remember doing this on the other engine. So we've got to examine that on the spring. We've got to work out how this... Oh, it's just floating in there, is it? chain out of the way and we should be able to get uh, just pull out the opposite way. <laughs> so we'll have to read the manual on how to check all these. All the teeth look okay. And the splines look okay. Some sort of clutch mechanism on it. I don't know how you check that. have to refer to the manual for that. Now then, let's move you back a bit. Because we should be able to move this big baby out now. I'm expecting it to be pretty heavy. Just do like there's something else holding it. But Not sure what. Sure, all the chains are out of the way. Feels like this little hole in it in the middle. I would have thought that would just lift out. Uh, let me stand up and uh, put a bit more strength into it. Ah, uh, there we go. Oh, yes, it is bloody heavy. Whack that down there a minute. Yes, this all feels good. Not sure about that one though. Should just fall down, shouldn't it? I think that's the one that was full of water. It should be floppy like them. 
the whole flop here. It's loose, but I don't see what's flop here, so I might have to take that one off and have a look. All the piston rings on this one as well, they're all jammed in solid. Can't find the piston rings because they're in the other shed, so I can't show them yet. So, let's try and get the three chains off for now. First chain. Don't seem to have any tight spots. Doesn't appear to have any play in the links. So hopefully the oil chain is okay. Let's get the uh, cam chain off. Okay as well, no stiff notch, no, no notchiness or stiff links. I suppose there's some sort of measurement you can do on the chain to check for wear, so we'll have to check the manual for that as well. Don't seem to be stretched because there's no, uh, no movement in the links backwards and forwards. Let's get the alternator chain off. that feels quite good as well. I'm pretty sure on the other engine this is all stiffened up. The links are locked up and you can't move them. So that's great that that is all nice and free. I suppose there must be some sort of measurement you do on that one as well. And we'll have to check the manual again for that. Yes, and before I get, before I get, before I forget, while we spray water and everything in this, don't forget to remove these bearing alignment pins. There's one there, and one over here. So make sure you remove those, make sure you put them in the right way as well. Because this one has a hole in it. And this one is solid. And uh, remove all the uh, alignment dowels up, up as well. One on each corner, basically. And one over there. So don't forget those because I almost forgot them. So these bearings might fall out as well, these shells. So be careful of those as well. I think that's the starter clutch down there. That looks all okay. I'll just give this a good clean up and then I might take that out.
gear down to this starter clutch gear, lay gear, whatever it is, to do with the alternator I think. Looks perfectly fine. All the teeth are there. No wear on the teeth I don't think. So let's put it back in at the bottom of the engine. Or the top of the engine, whichever way you want to look at it. At the top of the bottom of the engine. Yes, it just lives down there at the bottom. So I could just uh, drop it in the right way, it'd be all right, would it? Let's drop it in down there. Basically, it lives just there. So we've got our uh, shaft I'm gonna oil everything up but I'm not gonna do it now Let's put our little shaft back in and we've got this little fixing gizmo it's got an o-ring on it screws on there like so and there's a little 10 millimeter bolt Make sure that goes all the way down because it is a bit like a bicycle pump when you push these things in the suction pushes it back up if you know what I mean just put that in loose now so I know where it is and I know which round it goes so uh, what next okay then so I've been wire brushing this so long as I can. Just got to get the uh, Dremel and get in all these little bits and then I think that will be it. Good to go. Got it fairly clean in there. I might have another try to get some more of this brown stuff off. It's pretty stubborn on there. So yes, happy with it so far. You can see what I mean, all that brown stuff. Some of it's coming off and some of it's not. So yes, we'll get this as clean as we can and then we can start putting it back together. We can rebuild in. So yes, I'm going to call that the end on this video. Uh, very happy with how it's going. Perfectly splendid. <laughs> and I must admit, this is bloody coming useful. Bloody ripper, mate. So. Yes, hope you've enjoyed the video. Hope it's of some use to people with their CBRs to try and persuade them not to touch their engines. Oh, I'm not gonna do that like that. So yes, stay well, stay safe, and I'll see you on the next one. I'll see you in another life, brother.